everybody. Hope you've been doing well. Okay, I'm going to try to record this video again. Uh, I've tried to upload this video six times now. Each time I've been interrupted by phone calls, cell phone calls, and the last time it just decided to honk out on me, YouTube. So uh, maybe it'll work this time. Maybe I shouldn't be talking today, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, first thing. I'll uh, give you an update on the prototype. Progress has been slowed by personal life events and lack of funding, and it seems that every time I'm ready to record a demonstration video, I discover that I need more equipment. So, I mean, that's part of the trial and error. I anticipated this would happen. If there was not any trial and error through this process, then I would think something is wrong, because there's always trial and error when you are dealing with things of this nature. Most recently, I had to go back to town and get some of these, these quick disconnects for the bridge rectifier. So, I've come to a point now where I have an idea on how to expand on this prototype. So, the current device in theory is capable of producing 400% more electricity than it's using. I've recently had an idea on how to double that to 800%, which is quite substantial. 400% is good, but 800% is something that's really substantial. A device like that could quickly liberate everyone from the need to pay for an electrical utility and it will guide them into a self-sustaining civilization which is of course one of my life's goals along with abolishing debt-based currency and abolishing fossil fuels. It's just amazing to me that the military is already using such technology and they continue to suppress it from the civilian people. They have plasma, they have magnetic, they have solar, they have water, they have wind, they have hydrogen fuel, and they hoard it to themselves, and yet they claim to serve the civilian people? Hmm. This doesn't make much sense to me, everybody. But anyway, for this upgrade to take place on the prototype, I'm going to need more copper wire, more magnets, and of course that's going to mean, excuse me, that's going to mean more funding and more time. So, I've been working on this for three years already, it's been very slow. And it's coming together now more than it ever has before, so I trust that I will be able to obtain these items and I will make it happen. And, you know, in my higher consciousness, I've already made it happen. I've already achieved all my life's goals. It's just I get to watch it all unfold now and let my body catch up to my mind. Because my mind has already gone to the future. Okay, um, next thing I'd like to discuss is this meteor storm that's going on tonight from Comet Linear. So if you've done any occult study, you know about Comet Linear, you know what linear means, you know blah blah blah. You know, it's suspicious. It's supposed to be one of the largest meteor storms in history. Usually they just say it's a, what's the word for it? Meteor shower. And now they're calling it a meteor storm. So, you know, NASA has all of these technological advances and the secret space program and of course if you delve into occult study you know that they only give the civilian population about 30 percent of what's really going on they're deep space travelers I think they have colonies on the moon on various other planets and of course you know you have to expand your mind to even begin to comprehend such things but as I said I've done so and to me it seems very suspicious that they would not be able to pinpoint this meteor storm earlier and that would come up so quickly from this comet linear and I can only wonder is this a front for falling space junk we've had more space junk fall within the last six seven months than we've ever had before and I'm just very suspicious about it I think it could be a front for falling space junk because there's always some kind of cover-up for everything of this nature the more I study, the more I learn that everything is by design. Even, you know, things that we think are Mother Nature, such as earthquakes, such as tsunamis, and weather manipulation. This is all by design, everyone. They know what's going to happen. They know where it's going to happen. They know how it's going to happen. Because they're making it happen. Duh. So, just keep an open mind. And if you see any meteors, and if one should crash near you, then be careful, but try to get a look and pictures of it. And if it looks like space junk, then 
we'll know right away, hey, that's exactly what it is. It's not meteors, it's fucking space junk. Okay, last thing I want to get through today. Recently I've been receiving a lot of criticism for my life's goals and my, you know, ideals, such as the prosperity funds from birth, such as, uh, you know, abolishment of fossil fuels, transparency in government, etc. Abolishment of greed. So, when people talk to me about this and say, you know, you'll never accomplish that in your lifetime, why do you even try? Many have tried before you and they've just been swept under the rug. But that's not true. There are men who have tried before me, such as Nikola Tesla. And he was swept under the rug to a certain extent, but now I hear more people talking about Tesla than ever before. And another parable is Jesus Christ, who tried to liberate humanity and enlighten humanity to what's really going on thousands of years ago. And Jesus Christ is the most spoken name in the English language right now. So all I can say about that is the power of Christ compels us. And lastly, even some of my closest friends who are fellow occultists, and by occultist I don't mean by ritual, by oath, I mean by study. Uh, they've even asked me, you know, why are you continuing this? Aren't you worried of being assassinated? Aren't you worried of being captured? Not at all. In fact, you know, I think that would only speed the process along if that was to happen. Because you have man and you have God. And the only difference between man and God is knowledge. That's the only difference between man and God. Man looks at what he can accomplish in a singular lifetime and does not see much beyond that. God looks at what one can accomplish over many lifetimes. If the great work is not accomplished within this lifetime, then the foundation is laid in this lifetime for the next. And again, that is the difference between man and gods, at least in my studies anyway. And I'm not saying that I am a god. I am only a man. I only have the abilities of a man. But... I honestly feel I have the heart and the mind of a god. And you can call that narcissistic, you can call it whatever, but I look at my goals and I look at everyone else's goals and obviously there is a great rift, a great divide in between them. And again, that's what leads me to believe that I was placed on this planet to accomplish what only I can do, which is enlighten humanity to alternative technology enlighten them to the slavery and the conspiracy that we've all lived for thousands and thousands of years. So, again, you can call me a narcissist, you can call me whatever, I don't care. If I cared about other people's opinions of me, I never would have even started on YouTube. So, uh, I'll keep you updated on the prototype progress, and keep an eye on the sky tonight, and I hope you're all safe, and I love you all very much, and I hope you all be well.